I think Fiji Airways is hands down the best small carrier that I've flown in quite a long time. From the airport experience, to the business class seat, to the food, the service, we're going to see it all. So let's get into it. Welcome to Sydney. If you'd like to know the exact fare that I paid, or my next 5 videos in queue, please check out the description below. And if you're new here, hi there and welcome to the channel. My name is Kevin. You found yourself on a channel that thinks that the world needs a bit more honest travel content. I make airline trip reports, high-end hotel reviews, and cruise ship tours as well. I always film without the company's knowledge to be sure to get a true experience. That way, I give you nothing more than my own personal, honest, unbiased opinion. It's funny how a gray, rainy day really doesn't seem to matter all of that much when in the back of your head you know you're flying to Fiji today. We are now just outside of Terminal 1 at Sydney Kingsford Smith International Airport. Terminal 1 is the primary international terminal here and has the best of what's on offer in the airport. The check-in hall was busy, busy, busy with a slew of flights to Southeast Asia, checking in at around 11 a.m. when I arrived. I originally purchased an economy ticket for this flight, choosing this specific flight to get my best chance at stepping on board a Fiji Airways A350. Closer to the date of departure, if I was more or less sure that it was going to be an A350 and I saw that there were window seats open, I planned to make a bid for the upgrade, which I was successful with. In the description, I've detailed how much I paid for the original ticket, plus the upgrade itself. That upgrade gave me premium check-in, access to the Qantas Business Class Lounge, increased baggage, and of course, a business class seat. The check-in experience was a bit of a faff with the agent not knowing the carrier's policy for cabin baggage. That's fine, but I could have done without the attitude. Business class passengers are entitled to two carry-ons, plus a personal item. She was trying to convince me that the personal item was the only thing I was allowed to take. Anyway, off to security. Cabin baggage in tow. I forgot how jam-packed this airport is. And I mean that in a good way. Certainly, it does feel a bit overcrowded at times, but I appreciate how many venues and restaurants and stores there are. It makes for a nice place to be even without lounge access. So... Fiji Airways. They are a connecting partner of the One World Alliance and are partially owned by Qantas, which is why that's the lounge that I'm heading to now. Originally known as Katafaga Estates, the airline was founded by Aussie Harold Gatti, who in 1931 was the navigator on a record-breaking round-the-world flight with Wiley Post. After World War II, Gatti moved to Fiji and founded the air carrier. After his death, the airline was acquired by Qantas in 1958 and retooled as a regional airline to be known as Air Pacific. Qantas had the goal of creating a consortium of sorts in the South Pacific with shared ownership of the airline. By 1968, the majority of the airline was owned equally by Qantas, Air New Zealand, BOAC, and the Fijian government, with the governments of Tonga, Western Samoa, Nauru, Kiribati and the Solomon Islands owning small shares as well. Now we're inside the Qantas Business Class Lounge, which, like anything touched by Qantas or Jetstar, gets quite a bit of flack online. But I found the lounge to be decent. A few divided sections so that everything doesn't feel so out in the open would have been nice, but overall, no complaints from me. At the time, they were transitioning from breakfast to lunch. So, fast forward to 1970, and after independence, the Fijian government began buying back shares of the airline, and by 1974, owned a controlling stake of 51%, with 46% owned by Qantas, and the remainder by Air New Zealand and a few other island nations. This ownership structure remains to this day. The next decade saw expansion in just about every direction. While Australia and New Zealand were clearly priorities for the carrier, they set their sights on the US as well and began serving Honolulu in 1983. They currently serve a total of 26 destinations in 13 countries. On board, they were passing out arrival cards and asked if Fiji was my final destination, and I gotta be honest, 
it never occurred to me that part of their business would be Australia and New Zealand to US passengers transiting in Fiji. But I suppose it's an important part of their network. Now I'm heading to the new, at least new since the last time I was here, American Express Centurion Lounge just to quickly check it out. And to the viewers who are outraged each time I visit a lounge that wasn't included with my fare and have the audacity to show it, I just got a call from YouTube and they said that they're still waiting on your trip reports. Bonus points today for not having an 80 person long line to get in, like every other MX lounge that's ever existed seems to have. Inside is comfortable with plenty of seating on offer and plenty, plenty of outlets and ports for charging. The food on offer, like I always feel with Amex lounges, is good quality, but it always feels kind of one note. Like, we get it. You're one of the cool kids. You know how to make quinoa. Let's move on, though. All right, time to make our way now to the Air France KLM I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. We're going to the gate. In 2012, Fiji Airways rebranded itself to its current name, one that they did also use in the past. The design elements of the livery were created by Fijian Maasai artist Makareta Matamosi, and I do feel the need to take a moment to point out how freaking good their aircrafts always look. First of all, I know 11 years isn't that old for a logo, but it's clear that this current livery will be timeless. And somehow, white, black, and brown three colors that you'd think would just be dull and lifeless. They just look so fresh and inviting. The number of carriers on Earth that lean heavily into the heritage direction when it comes to their livery is very few, and I really appreciate it when they do it. I also love the windows here for how close you get to the aircraft. This is not zoomed in at all. I don't think I've ever been closer to a wingtip in my life. So generally in my reviews, I don't penalize a delay of under an hour, unless it's for poor communication or something like that. But I do always look at the trend. And in this case, this flight is delayed 64% of the time. 19% of all of the flights with major delays over an hour, as with our flight tonight. So in this case, I do need to deduct a bit for it. Just retime the flight. Eventually we began boarding and now we can take a look at today's flight stats. We'd be taking off 59 minutes behind schedule and head up to 40,000 feet for our four hour flight to Nadi, where we'd end up landing just over an hour late. Before this flight, I already knew exactly what the cabin looked like, but stepping on board this is by far the freshest looking and feeling cabin that I think I've ever seen. Normally, cabins that have so much white or gray just look cold. But here, we have just enough warmth from the overhead tropical colored lights and the amenities at the seat to make it a really welcoming environment. The cabin features Super Diamond reverse herringbone seats without doors, the likes of which you'll find on many airlines across the globe. These days, I feel like this seat is the standard bearer for any airline that wants to offer a competitive business class product. Spread over nine rows, there are a total of 33 seats in the large single cabin. Take note though, the rows are staggered, not all rows have the same number of seats, and they start at row 11 and skip 13 and 14. So pay attention when you're choosing your seats. That said, there really are no bad seats on board. As for dimensions, the seat is more or less a standard size when upright and offers a larger than average sleeping surface, which stretches to a full two meters. Let's take a detailed look at the seat. Upon boarding, each seat had a pillow and blanket, as well as a bottle of water, Fiji water of course, and headphones in the movable armrest storage cubby.
On the other side, there are two storage cubbies. One is shallow and good for storing your passport and such, and the other is a deeper compartment, and you'll find in there the power outlet, USB port, headphone jack, and a new generation in-flight entertainment remote. And just below that is yet another storage cubby. Next to your seat are the well-labeled seat controls, and above your shoulder is a reading light. As the cabin was getting settled in, the crew came around with pre-departure beverages, menu cards, and the best smelling hot towels that I've ever smelt. I forgot to ask on board, but if anyone knows what that very fruity floral fragrance was, please let me know in the comments. Below the footrest was plenty of space for a backpack or a small carry-on. If you support the content that I've been putting out on the channel, or honest travel content in general, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. The two easiest ways that you can tell YouTube that this video was worth your time. For anyone interested in supporting additionally, my Patreon is also linked in the description below. Thanks very much for watching today. While these seats don't have doors, you can't really see your neighbor in seats like this, so it really doesn't matter. I give props to Fiji Airways for choosing a seat shell that does give you an actual sense of privacy. The safety video began and our pushback came soon after. While you seem to see them all over the Trans-Pacific Network, the airline currently only has two A350s with two more on order. They also have four A330s and six 737s for a total of just 12 aircraft. Note that this doesn't include their regional subsidiary, which operates ATR turboprops as well as some other smaller prop planes. When you see the product on board, the finishing details, the food presentation, the entertainment selection, I think it's important to keep in mind how small this fleet is, and therefore how difficult and costly it is to maintain such standards. It's currently estimated that this airline brings 64% of all tourists into Fiji. It's clear from the quality of products on offer that the government was here to impress and ensure that your holiday started the moment that you walked on board. I had my camera pitched down pretty low, hoping that somehow I'd be able to see the city, but that wasn't in the cards for today. But it still was a beautiful takeoff as we crossed over the coastline. Lining up to the north, the spool up and takeoff are coming up next. There certainly wasn't much congestion on the route today, spending around 99% of the flight over open ocean. Let's take a look at some of the comforts on board. The blanket was soft and pill and lint free, which I really appreciate from this type of blanket. And these are the kind of details that I'm talking about. 
I don't think any other airline with this style of blanket would even think to have a binding all around. The pillow was pleasantly fluffy, not too floppy, not too firm. And the headphones were fine. As for the in-flight entertainment, for such a small airline, I'd say it's a decent selection of movies and shows on offer. The interface was nicely laid out and fairly responsive. It also had camera views as well as a really well done flight map. There was also Wi-Fi on board, but at $25 for half a gigabyte, that's going to be a hard pass for me. The bathrooms were truly spotlessly clean throughout the flight though. Tablecloths were laid as the crew did final preparations for dinner service. Here's the full menu for tonight's flight. Please note the red prices next to the wines are my addition to the graphic just to give you an idea of the wine value on offer. The single tray meal service came with a green papaya salad and a few rolls along with butter, salad dressing and salt and pepper. For the main dish there was a choice of southern fried chicken, feta and spinach frittata or beef rendang. I went with the rendang, obviously, and it was so freaking good. Let's just politely ignore the overcooked broccoli and the undercooked bell pepper for a moment. This rendang was one of the better dishes that I've ever had in the air. Afterwards, crew came around to take dessert orders. A choice of a lemon curd pavlova or a fruit bowl. Pavlova, again, obviously. Unfortunately, the seat in front of me got the last one which was mildly actually heartbreaking at the time, but at least there was an incredible sunset to be had. And how beautiful is that engine? I would also give them props for a menu that is so clearly made for their target customers. If you asked me to design a menu that would equally please Aussies, Kiwis and Americans, I'm not sure what I'd put on it, but I can say for sure this menu did it quite well. Here's the seat in full flat mode. Loads of space, the only downside is the large gap in between the seat back and the seat. If you could snag an extra blanket, you could just easily fix that, or even a rolled up t-shirt would do the trick. And before I knew it, those four wonderful hours were quickly coming to a close as we approached Fiji. Enjoy the landing. And then, as if the flight wasn't good enough already, we were treated to an outdoor walkway from the aircraft, so a pretty incredible close-up view was had too. So, I think I enjoyed myself. While I am well aware that their A330s offer a less desirable business class product, I'd happily fly them again. And if I was able to get all A350 flights, I'd be more than happy to try them from the US 
to Australia or New Zealand, with a stopover, of course. I really do hope that you enjoyed this trip report today. If you did, please be sure to click that thumbs up button and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my upcoming content. In the next few weeks, we're going to continue with Fiji, then head down to Auckland, and then Bali and Taiwan. But next time, I'll see you at the Sofitel Denarau Island in Fiji. Oh, and thanks for watching till the end.